oh, top of the group, no issues at all. This is very nice. Oh, what's message. this? Incoming Double blast. Message. Oh dear, right. Better open up the laptop. Oh, right. Okay. Larson and Rakasan. Issues with leaving the club. Right. Frederick, you're not worth that much, so you can just bugger off, mate. See you later when your contract runs out. I think we'll be fine without you, even though you're homegrown at club. Kaylin, you're worth quite a bit more, aren't you? Uh, we better sort you out, actually. Yeah, 23 to 25 million. If we're going to sell you, I want that money. We'll tell you that we're ambitious. How about that? Get in there. Sod off, Frederick. You stay here, Kaylin. Oh, easy work. Easy work. Now let's go beat Shaq Tower again. And welcome to episode number 161 of Who's the Big Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. We have a rematch from yesterday, this time away from home in our Champions League group against Shakhtar. A win here could actually secure us our passage through to the first knockout round. And off the back of that, we are going to do the end of season review here now that things have wrapped up domestically in Iceland. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but this is what our group does look like off the back of yesterday's episode where we did pick up that 5-1 win which you can see there over Shakhtar as well as a late albeit very well deserved win against Ajax at home as well if you missed that episode I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner and today we have a rematch against Shakhtar as I said a win here, considering that Barcelona are playing Ajax in the other game, should be enough for us to secure our passage through to the first knockout round and also go a long way towards us securing top spot in this group as well with games coming up in tomorrow's episode at home against Barca and away against Ajax. But if we get to 12 points at the end of today's episode, as I said, that should take us a long way towards securing top spot in this group. So we're going to get straight into this game today because not much to cover off before we do get into it, the only thing we do need to have a look at is the injury list going into this game because it does affect the team that we are going to be putting out for this one because unfortunately we do have a few injuries and the most notable one of those, only one of the injuries in fact, is to a player who's actually registered for our Champions League squad and that is Kalen Rakasan, that calf strain that he suffered at the end of yesterday's episode. He's out for a further nine days to three weeks. So that means that we've had to change things up in the midfield done something a little bit unexpected but we will reveal what that is when we get to the team sheets before we play this lone game of today's episode and as I said hopefully secure our place in the first knockout round to start off 2035 and we'll come back shortly from Kiev to take on Shakhtar in this Champions League group game. And here are the team sheets for this lone game of today's episode. There are Shakhtar. Looks like they're playing a different formation than they did yesterday to up front but here is us the main focus is the midfield with no Rakasan, but Siki comes in, Basaro Gay goes forward to the box to box, and Lasana Dumbia is the Mazala. That was the suggestion from the assistant manager. It gets our best three midfielders out there who are fits. We'll try that. And also, that means that Narek Foskanyan makes his way onto the bench as the Mazala backup for this game. But apart from that, the same team that played against these guys yesterday, and hopefully, we can pick up a similar result. And after only four minutes, we have our first highlight here. It does start off with a goal kick to Shakhtar. They try and pump that towards Traore. Danelli initially wins the ball, and we do get it back after a little bit with an aerial ping-pong battle and do it to play out of defence here, getting that up to Lasana Dombia. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes today as a Mazzalo. Good early chance here for Saki, but that's a decent save there from the Shakhtar goalkeeper to keep it at nil all early. We'll see if anything does come from the subsequent corner, Lasana Dombia to put this into the mix of us so he can't quite get his head on the end of that. Of course, with our change in the midfield, it does mean that Basaro Gay, not normally where he would be, that's the one concern with that change, but nothing doing early, and it's still nil all after seven minutes. And we go forward to the 17-minute mark now. We have a free kick, which Dumbia tries to put far post there for Basaro Gay, but it's a little bit too deep, and Cabela's there to tidy things up for Shakhtar. Pumps this deep. Traore does win that header in the air, but Ali Ramadan is there to tidy things up for us and we try and get on the front foot 
off the back of that, albeit end up playing it back to Ali Ramadan, but so far in complete control of this game, despite just having that one highlight, all the stats are in our favour. Hopefully, we can make the most of it sooner rather than later. A bit of a deflection there for Nicola Zimmerman, and he'll bury that in the bottom left corner. It's a little bit fortunate that ball being played for there to Adam Saki. They kind of dealt with the Shakhtar, but it did fall to Zimmerman, and he just waltzed his way through the Shakhtar defence and puts that away in the bottom left corner. And there is our opening goal. Had a bit of work to do once he got the ball, but too much pace there for the defence, and the goalkeeper comes out in no man's land. And just like that, 1-0 Volsunga after only 18 minutes in this away game in our Champions League group. And not too long off the back of that, we are back down the end for a corner. Denali gets his head on the end of that, goes just over the bar. So well on top of Shakhtar here and still 1-0 up after 20 minutes. And not too long off the back of that, we do have another corner. And this time Denali will put that in the back of the net. And just like that, it's a quick fire double. And we go 2-0 up here just after the 20 minute mark and based on the stats which you did see before hard to argue with that Shakhtar yet to fire a shot and a good finish there from Denali offset piece to put us 2-0 up and only a few minutes shy of the half hour mark there was a save there from the Shakhtar goalkeeper didn't quite see what that came off but we are about to have a corner so this could be dangerous considering they did show the build up to this one we put this into the mix of it Denali yet again puts that just over the bar but we are actually looking quite threatening from set piece despite the fact that Basaro Gay isn't really in the mix like he usually would be for those with him moving forward into the box to box role, but not too far off the back of that previous highlight. We do have another one here as we look to play out from the back, and Gay will play that back to Ramadan, and we eventually get that out to our left hand side. Mizkic, nice ball over the top here for Adam Saki. We'll take that round the goalkeeper, but just misses that inside post, and it's still 2 0 with 15 minutes left in the first half. And not too long before half time, we do have one more highlight here with about five minutes to go, albeit there still could be more the way that we are playing in this one so far. Complete domination, but we start to get on the front foot despite that slide tackle there on Zimmerman. We do keep possession, nice ball over there for Mizkic. Tries to get a shot off, but a decent block there from a Shakhtar defender. And Dumbia plays that all the way back there to Basiki. And now Basaroge will hold things up. And now it's an interception from Shakhtar, but Basiki hits the foot in there. And Adam Saki will crank that into the top right corner. He's had a few good chances so far in this first half, and there comes his first goal right on the 40-minute mark, and it does look like we are going to cruise to victory here before half time already, holding a 3-0 lead, so quite similar to what happened against these guys in yesterday's game. It's a really good finish there from Saki, despite a little bit of disjointed build-up, and as I said, that makes it 3-0 at the 40-minute mark. And that is half time in this game in today's episode. Very comprehensive performance, as you can see, pretty much matching our XG. And so far, Shakhtar have offered very little here, despite being at home. So things going well here. And we should really be on the verge of securing our place in the first knockout round for the Champions League in 2035. No changes needed just yet, but no doubt we'll make a few in the second half, get some of those young guys on the field as we hold a 3 0 lead. And just over 10 minutes into the second half, we are on the attack still, despite that good slight to Hulia on Zimmerman. The ball does fall back in our position to Basaro game. We try and get something going again here through our midfield. And Basiki here holds the ball up around the halfway line, just waiting for the gap to appear here in Shakhtar's defense. They have got a shot off to start off the second half, but that is it. It was not on target. We are still well and truly on top in this one. Mizkic, nice ball there for Zimmerman, but that's a little bit of a weak shot. Pretty safe save that for Cabal. And it's still 3-0 coming up to the hour mark. And right on the 69-minute mark, it's good time for us to make our first few substitutions in this one. Bocket can come on for Herrera, only going okay and seeing as he's on the bench and is our number 69 here. At Volsung, we will bring on the Rick Voskanyan for Basaroge. He's just got more of a heavy workload than those other midfielders, so he can come on and Dumbia can go back in his natural position. That's our first two subs used, still 3-0 up with about 20 minutes left. And very shortly off the back of those substitutions, it's a free kick there to Shakhtar, albeit very close to their own goal line, but they pump it deep and we get position back there through A here and Adam Saki makes his way towards the byline here down the right-hand side. But Saki will try and get a shot off there. That's a good save that though from Cobell. We'll see if anything else does come from this highlight as we take our time here to build things up. But that was a decent shot there from our defensive midfielder who also happens to be quite a good penalty taker, which is quite a good string. And his bow, the ball's played for there though to Adam Saki, but I dare say he might have been offside there. That looked a little bit too good to be true off that header through from Mizkic. So it says 4-0 for now, but I think this one is going to get ruled out. Indeed, that is the case. It's still 3-0 with just under 20 minutes left. 
and not too long off the back of that previous highlight, we've got about 17 minutes left. It's a good time to bring on someone so that they can get a rating and help their development. And I think that player here is going to be Richard Wasawa. He can come on, I think, for Filippo Dinelli. He's been a little bit tired of late as well. He's been playing well so far, but Waswa can come on for him. Just realized I've been getting his name wrong the entire season. So sorry about that, Richard. But that's our last sub used. 17 minutes left and still 3 nil up. And shortly off the back of that last substitution, we have a free kick here just inside the opposition half. Can we extend our lead and hopefully get some of these players off the bench involved in a goal to boost those ratings up to help their development? And it is Narek here who is on the ball. We'll play that one back to Ali Ramadan. And he takes that all the way back to Carl Volan, albeit a fair way outside his box. And Waswa will play this up to Dumbia. Now Radenko Polo. We just hold things up here in the defense for now, but now start to make our way forward. Nice ball over there from Krollo Narek there with the header, and Adam Saki will bury that just inside the far post. It's an assist off the bench for Narek, which is very good indeed, and that makes the score line 4-0 with 15 minutes to go. Some good patient build-up. Redenko Krollo, nice ball out here to Narek. Not the tallest player, but still gets to the ball before the defender there for Shakhtar and Saki with a good finish, and he makes it 4-0. And only a few minutes off the back of that fourth goal, we do have another free kick here starting from a pretty similar position to that last highlight just off the back of that previous goal as well. A score update from the other game, Barcelona have taken a 1-0 lead here at the Johan Cruyff Arena, but this time it is actually Shakhtar who get the ball back, albeit in the wreck with a good little foot in there, and we are back on the attack, and it is Zimmerman here with a chance, but just blasts it wide, and that leaves it at 4-0 with just over 10 minutes left. And just about to enter the last 10 minutes of this one, we have a free kick here, which Dumbia looks like he might actually be trying to chip the goalkeeper from that far out, because he was a little bit off there, his line, but Cabal does retreat and get the ball, but he pumps it deep, and we do get possession back here, and I get again on the attack, Ms. Kitch will play that back to Ramadan right on the halfway line, and we'll see what happens here as we take our time yet again in defence like we saw in the last goal. That does work for us, and we now start to get on the front foot, Narek makes his way inside the box, plays that back for Ms. Kitch, gets a shot off, it's saved from Cabell, but the deflection falls straight into the path of Nicholas Zimmerman, it's the simplest of tap-ins, he won't miss those, and that makes it 5-0 here with just under 10 minutes left. And in the end, it's been a pretty safe cakewalk for us here away from home, despite the fact that in the second half yesterday, Shakhtar actually gave us a bit to think about in that home game, but this game has been pretty much like the first half of that one, but for the entire 90 minutes as we make it 5-0 late. And that is full time in this one. Very, very comprehensive performance. Shakhtar only getting the one shot off in that game. It wasn't on target. We got 40 off. 24 on target, pretty much matching our XG and the players that came off the bench. The young ones all got pretty good ratings as well. So that's a good day at the office. And as I said, with that win for Barcelona over Ajax by what looked like a scoreline of 1-0 and the only update that we did get, that should mean that we've already qualified for the knockouts of the Champions League. And indeed, that is the case. Ajax only on three points and with two games left in the group stage. So it looks like it's a battle now between us and Barcelona for top spot in the group you would like to think. And with that big advantage of five points, we should be able to secure top spot in tomorrow's episode. But so far unbeaten in this group, four from four. And we are five points clear of Barcelona off the back of that 5-0 win away at Shakhtar. We'll come back shortly and probably check in on HK and Phil here before we do our end of season review. And we'll just come back a few days off the back of that win against Shakhtar. Just to update you guys on all the players who are unavailable at the moment through international duty, not that it matters because we've got three weeks until our next game against Barcelona. I do think that game as well is being played at the La Garda as well, despite the fact our new stadium is opening a few days prior to that. But here are all the players at the club who are out on international duty in this upcoming break. As you can see, a lot of players in under 21 systems, but if we make our way down a little bit further, you start to see some players who are out on full international duty and we make our way down to the bottom half. There's actually quite a bit involved here. There's sort of the second third of this. As you can see, Horikawa with Japan, Herrera with Mexico. We've got Anason and Galtason out with Iceland. We've got Krolo with Croatia, Volum with Germany, and we make our way down now to the bottom bit. Saki and Gay with Morocco and Senegal, and also Voskanyan with Armenia, Denali and Basiki with Belgium, as well as Mizkic with Serbia. So we have a lot of international players here at Volsunga, that is why we often have to take those international breaks off domestically and postpone games until the latter part of the season, but thought that might be a good time for this update right before the end of season review 
showing all the players that we do have out on international duty these days. And we've gone forward another few days off the back of that last international update. Here is another one. A few more players who are out on international duty. Will Lerbeck with Norway, Ramadan with Congo, and both Dumbia and Zimmerman with France. I do believe that Kenny Boreal is also with France, the former Volsunga player who we did sell in this past transfer window. But we come back because for the first time in the save, we have a player rated in the goal 50 best players in the world, and that player is Lasana Dombia, albeit down in 45th, which does seem a little bit harsh when you compare him to some of the other players on this list with his five-star potential and ability, but he is the youngest player on this list. He is no doubt going to make his way up that list. Hopefully, we can keep hold of him, and he can end up being a legend here at Volsung, a very, very good box-to-box -box midfielder, and as you saw in the last game, also can do a decent job in the Mazala, but for the first time in the save, we have someone on that top 50 list, albeit only down in 45th at Lasana Dombia, breaks through as the first Volsunga player on the goal 50 list. And we have now got forward a few days prior to our next game in the Champions League against Barcelona, and we are about to have a look at our end of season review, but before we do get stuck into that, a quick update on what happened on the fourth match week in both the Europa League and in the Conference League. Unfortunately, HK cannot make the knockouts of the Europa League, they lost 3-0 there to Athletic Club at the moment. It is Athletic Club in Monaco who have secured qualification out of that group. But with only two games left, they do still have that three-point buffer over Oli. As long as they can pick up a draw away in their next game, they should make their way through to the Conference League knockouts. And that would be the first knockout football that a fellow Icelandic team has got in this save. So hopefully HK don't blow things there and can make their way through to the knockouts of a European competition for the first time even if it is the Conference League. And speaking of the Conference League, time to have a quick look at how Phil Kier are getting on in their group. And they managed the exact same result as they got from yesterday this time at home. They opened the scoring nice and early there, but unfortunately conceded an equaliser against Podgorica with 20 minutes left. So that puts them on two points, currently last in their group because of goal differential. And Nice and Horsens have already qualified out of that group. So Phil Kier getting a couple of coefficient points there through some draws, but it's probably all they're going to do with their last two games in that group against both Nice and Horsens. Hopefully, they can keep the goal differential respectable and try and sneak their way into third in their group above Podkolika, just in case that does make some sort of difference on the coefficient table. But we have gone up to our end of season review here for 2034, obviously mainly focusing on domestic stuff here in Iceland, especially because it does fall at a quite weird time to try and divide the two Champions League seasons, which it is going to try and judge. But as you can see on screen, yet again, we did pick up the domestic quadruple. And there are our signings from this past season. Apparently, the signing of the season, according to the board, was Carl Voll. And we did spend £40.5 million on him. Did a good job at the World Cup getting Germany to be runners-up in that competition before joining us for this current Champions League campaign. And so far, has done a pretty good job. 22 appearances for an average rating of 7.35. The other transfers that we did make, Agatire actually has the highest average rating of the transfers that we have made, was a free transfer as well from Chelsea, so we're a little bit surprised that he didn't get it, but has made less appearances. Then Volan so far, Ms. Kitch, a very good signing it looks like so far, 5 million for a player who has got 7 goals and 7 assists in 15 appearances. Bruno Costa wasn't registered for the Champions League squad, but is looking very, very good down in the youth league in the under-19s. He's performing quite well I think his ability as well as shot up two free stars so he's looking like quite the purchase there for around about the 10 million mark and in the senior team nine appearances for one goal and three assists and below that Waswa we spent 41 million on him he's been a solid backup center back so far with a 7.33 rating in nine appearances and someone a bit cheaper Kelvin Awosu for less than one million he's been decent so far albeit not many appearances but he does have a little bit of potential there with four stars, so I think this past year had some decent transfer business in it. And in terms of the outs, we got rid of quite a few familiar names here at Volsunga. Did feel like it was time to move on to a slightly younger generation of player. De Prisco, he left us for 9.5 million. So far, doing a good job at Mines in the Bundesliga. Valdemar on playing well for HK, no doubt helping them in the Europa League campaign. Kenny Boreal for 16.5 million. He's playing quite well so far for Inter Milan. Maybe we'll see those guys come the knockouts of the Champions League. Chaka Traore doing decently as well at Real Sociedad for 15 million. Elias Anderson solid so far for Freiburg, selling him for just under 13 million. 
Rosslich we sold for not match to HK. He's done all right for those guys so far. Delfino going okay for Nice. Down in the Conference League, as you saw a few episodes ago, he did score for those guys. Against Phil Kier and Lee Van Tan, we sold for 10 million. Only okay so far. At Leicester, Corral Giroux for 20 million to Valencia. That does look like a very good bit of business for us. Only going okay for those guys at the moment. As well, we make our way down this list a little bit further. A few more fringe players, the likes of Vandro, Chet Darkus, Garda Song, Cools, and Declan Spencer going to some other European clubs for not much money. And right down the bottom, you can see there Thomas Tishi going to Man United yet to make a senior appearance. And we got 10 million for him. So I think we did quite well in this past transfer window. I've really strengthened up our squad and the players who have been out on loan this past season. The two that really matter there because Crollo and Horikawa we were out on loan while we were concluding our past Champions League campaign. But Sig Poisson's doing a decent job at Phil Kier. And I do believe Phil Kier are going to trigger an optional future fee for him. So he should be going to Phil Kier on a permanent basis. And Fabrizio doing a decent job so far for Phil Kier as well. Probably another player that we might look to let go on a permanent to those guys. Doesn't quite have the current ability or potential to be featuring here. At Volsinger, in terms of the results this past season, really good domestic season. We did just drop points in our last game of the season. That was right before that opening game of yesterday's episode against Ajax. And it was also against HK away from home as well. So quite a tough one to end things. We managed to pick up a draw there. But apart from that, won all of our previous 21 games. And we picked up the league by eight points over HK. Yet again, Phil here in the Europa League. And Breda Blick and Valerakovic will be in conference league qualifying. For next season, Champions League, unfortunately, we missed out on our first title in that competition last season, but thanks to our former goalkeeper, Joe Corcoran, in a penalty shootout, but have started off this season very, very well, as you saw before. And as you can see there, 12 points from our first four games and already qualified for the knockouts. Hopefully, we can go one step further than we have gone the past two years, come 2035 and pick up our first bit of European silver. We are the Molka Bicker, and we end up winning this quite comfortably off the back of a 3-0 win in the final against HK. And along the way, we weren't really pushed at any stage either. So that was quite a comfortable win for us in the Icelandic Cup this season. The Super Cup, we did win quite narrowly over HK back in April. That was our third trophy domestically that we picked up. And the last of them is the deal to occur. It was actually quite a close final against HK, but we did get the job done yet again there by two goals to one. And that's how we did complete the domestic quadruple for 2034, the moments to remember our biggest win was against Vikinger in August at home 9-0. And the match to remember apparently was the away game earlier back in May by eight goals to nil against the same opposition. I would like to think there were some more important wins than that, especially that second leg comeback against PSG would have probably been my vote in the Champions League semi-finals. But nonetheless, that is what they have gone with in game. And the goal of the season from a player who these days plays for Nice and that was Hercules Delfino in the League Cup earlier this year. And it was against Protoraktivik. And it was a free kick as well. Just puts that into the top right corner. Really good goal from a striker who was quite good from free kicks. One of the disadvantages of letting him go. But taking up one of those foreign player spots. It did feel like it was the right time to let go of him. But can't argue too much with that being our goal of the season. Despite the lack of build up play. Over to the finances. These are actually a little bit weaker than last season. Which is a little bit surprising considering. We did pretty much the same exact thing both domestically and in Europe, but our broadcast revenue went down as well as our corporate hospitality. Our competition prize money for some reason went down by about 4 million. That might be because we didn't play in a Champions League playoff this past season. That might be why that prize money has just gone down a little bit. And also for some reason our match day commercial and retail has gone down just a little bit. But our reputation exactly the same still at four stars. And the biggest shirt sellers Top seller is Horikawa, which is quite interesting. Must be doing some decent business there in Asia. With those shirt sales in Dumbia, Saki, Maliano, and Rakasan round up our top five merch sellers in terms of shirts. So we'll get to the how we lined up shortly, because as per usual, that doesn't quite look right. And we go over to the awards yet again managerially. We get absolutely nothing. Not too sure what more we need to do to get an Icelandic Manager of the Year award. I think this time it went to the Valorakovic Manager despite only winning 50% of their games and finishing about where they were expected to finish on the league table. But in terms of our club awards, the player of the season and young player of the season did go to Adam Saki off the back of a very good campaign, as you saw before, signing of the season and goal of the season 
to Villain and Delfino respectively. Adam Saki was the top goal scorer with 30 goals this past year. Lasana Dombi had the most assists with 15. Most player of the matches went to Nicholas Zimmerman with 6 and the highest average rating was also to Zimmerman with 8.1 and the slightly less important one, the most passes per 90, that was from Alain Basicki with 100. And 20 and over to some competition and general worldwide awards. First off, we did not actually get a player to win the Icelandic Player of the Year for the first division, but we did get the Young Player of the Year there. in Hans Voss, the African striker of the season, as well as the broadcaster's African footballer of the year was Adam Saki, not the actual African footballer of the year, just the broadcaster's one. That was Adam Saki. The Champions League Golden Boot also went to him, and the Champions League midfielder of the season that went to Nicholas Zimmerman. So some good awards there for our players and the record breakers here at the club. Fabio Maliano now does have the most league goals by a Volsinger player with 74, the highest transfer fee paid. Carl Volen with that 40.5 and the highest transfer fee received was for Corral Giroux with that 20 million. As I said, looking at how he's done so far, that looks like quite a good bit of business and that does do the awards part of this end of season review. Actually, while we're on it, we'll have a quick look down and have a look at the Islands Gildan signings of the season, rather unsurprisingly off the back of what we saw a few episodes ago in the Malka Bickerham final. The signing of the season actually went to the HK goalkeeper with his eight clean sheets in St. Clair Hendricks on, but Cal Vullen is on that list as well, having a noticeably higher average rating as well, but he is the only Volsinger player on that list, and we'll just go over now to the info page and have a look at our best 11 from this past season. And this is what the best 11 for 2034 does look like, as suspected it was a bit different to what was shown before on that end of season award blurb that does come up. Cal Volen in goal with that good average rating our back four. Pedro Lamos, Filippo Dinelli, Ali Ramadan, and Louis Herrera. So in the end, Pedro Lamos just outperforming Rodinko Crollo this past season in terms of average rating. So grabs that right back spot, but apart from that, that is the defence that we have been lining up so far. In this current Champions League campaign, our midfield made up of Basiki, Dumbia, and Rakasan. So interesting to see that Basiki has been outperforming Basaroge this season in terms of that average rating. In terms of our front three, that also just looks slightly different. Tommy Hero, Horikawa doing a really good job for our backup team with a 7.79 and 8 goals in 10 appearances, obviously helped by the fact that he can take penalties. So he starts at left wing for us with Adam Saki up front being the player of the year and Nicholas Zimmerman with those most man of the match awards out on the right wing. So it does look pretty close to what we've been using in this current Champions League campaign. And the bench is made up of Delfino, despite the fact that he's no longer at the club, as well as Jakubov, Bokek, Mizkic, Voss, Guy, and Agatigare. So some of those players, most notably Mizkic, has done quite a good job since joining the club to make that best 11. But that looks like a pretty solid best 11, considering the players that we have been using over this past season. And we go over now back to the inbox and have a look at what our overall best 11 does look like these days. And there are two new additions to our best 11. The first of those is Adam Saki. With his 75 appearances and 89 goals, he makes his way straight into that staying 11 in place of Jao Pedro, who snuck his way back up front. He makes his way back down to the bench, and the other player who makes his way into the squad is Ali Ramadan, albeit only on the bench. So in terms of what the actual staying 11 does look like these days, Sarah Fellini is still in goal. Diaz, the Prisco Polo, and Ian Carlo at right back. That looks like a change because I think last year we had Patrick Nygaard at right back for some strange reason. But that's a pretty solid defence that we did use a few seasons ago in Champions League football. The midfield quite similar to what we do have these days with just Lasana Dumbia having not quite done enough to make that midfield. But Gay Rakasan and Mariano there. And it's our front three from last season with Chaka Traore out left. Zimmerman out on the right and Adam Saki up front with a bench of Will Lurvik, Mbiyamba, Ramadan, Nygaard, Larson, Nicolusi, Kaviglia and Zhao Pedro. But I think that will do it for today's episode. We've secured ourselves our place through to the first knockout round of the Champions League and tomorrow I think we just need one more win from those two games either at home against Barcelona or away at Ajax to make sure that we do qualify in top spot and we will also of course have the draw for that first knockout round as well as hopefully see who HK get in the first knockout round of the Conference League provided that they don't blow things in their Europa League group. But as I said, that will do it 
for today's episode. If you did enjoy this one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. I just paused things up a little bit there in terms of screens because I couldn't show you guys the fixtures before because we haven't quite ticked over into the new season. But as I said, Barcelona at home, I'm pretty sure that game is at the Lau as well, despite the fact that our new stadium is opening a few days prior, but that could potentially be the first game at our new stadium. And we follow that up with a trip to the Johan Cruyff Arena. And as I said, we'll also have the draws for the knockouts of the various European competitions, which the Icelandic teams are in. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.